All right, so in this study, we have 24 people with six people in each condition. Let me show you what I mean here. First of all, if we scroll down in SPSS, we can see that there are, in fact, 24 people, as I have 24 rows of data. Now, within each of these, we have six people who are in what we would call a condition, a given condition. And what I mean is they have a unique combination of each factor or independent variable. Let me show you what I mean here. So the first six people, they all have no volume, and they were in the spaced method of studying. The next six people have no volume, but they weren't in the spaced method. Instead, they were in the cramming method. And then the next six people have high volume, and they had spaced. And then finally, our last six people have high volume with the cramming method. Okay, and in this study, if you were going to conduct this study, you would make sure that the people who got the space condition spaced their studying over those five consecutive nights, whereas the people who got the cramming condition did not space, but in fact crammed that night before. And while they were studying, they either had no music or they had music playing in the background that was of high volume. So we're going to look at the difference, if there is any, in exam scores as a result of these two independent variables or factors. Notice that we have two levels or groups to volume, none versus high, and we have two levels or groups to study method, spaced versus cramming. We could refer to this, and it commonly is referred to as a two, that indicates two levels to volume. And then we see an X here, and we read that as by, the word by. So two by two, the second two corresponds to study method, spaced versus cramming. There are two levels there. So we have a two by two ANOVA, which we can literally multiply this here, two times two, and that equals four. Or we have four conditions in total, and we saw those before. Recall there were six people in each of the separate and unique conditions. And when we have all levels of one factor crossed with all levels of another factor, in other words, the none group half got spaced, half got cramming. For the high volume group, half got spaced, half got cramming. So this is known as a completely crossed design. And that is, all levels of volume are crossed with all levels of study method. Now, there are different types of ANOVAs you can run where the factors are not completely crossed. But the vast majority of the time, the ANOVAs that I see in practice are completely crossed. And finally, we will test each of these tests. And once again, in review, we're going to have a test for volume, a test for study method, and a test for the interaction of these two factors. So we'll have three tests, and we'll test each of those at 0.05. Okay, so alpha 0.05 for each test. Let's go ahead and get started. So to run this test, we want to select Analyze, and then General Linear Model, and then select Univariate. Now here we want to move our dependent variable, which recall was the exam scores, to our dependent variable box. And then we want to move our independent variables or factors to the fixed factors box. So I'm going to press and hold the control key and then click on both of these factors and move them over to fixed factors. Next click on options. And then here we'll once again press and hold the control key, move all of these over to the right to the display means for box. This will give us means for both of our factors and the interaction. And by the way, in, the interaction is represented in SPSS with the factor names with an asterisk in between them. So we would read this volume by study method. Next, under display, click descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size and also homogeneity tests. Click Continue. 
and then we want to go to plots as well so click on that button and here this is where we make the plot of the interaction effect and we're going to move volume over to horizontal axis so click on the arrow there and then select study method and move that to the separate lines box and it's very important to make sure you click the add button so go ahead and do that notice it throws it down here into the plots box that's what we want and then click continue and that's it so go ahead and click OK.